Well, hello YouTubers. I'm making another uh, run of nitric acid and I've made a few changes in the way I do it, dare I say improvements even in the way I do it. Uh, the first one is uh, instead of using tap water like I've always used in the past, these days I'm running ice water through the condenser and I know the lighting is terrible out here, it's very harsh, sorry about that. It's a very bright day and I'm under a shade so the, there's shadows and it, it comes and goes. Um, Anyway, I'm using ice water in the condenser instead of tap water, and I did this the last time I made nitric acid, and I seem to get a much better yield. Certainly, uh, most of the condensation was happening up here, and I wasn't getting condensing all the way down here, and lots of uh, lots of vapors coming out the hose. I've got the hose running into my homemade fume hood over here to uh, get rid of uh, the uh, nitrogen dioxide gases that bubble off. And I made another change. Um, what I'm doing here is I am, this is my nitric acid storage bottle. It's, you know, got a ground glass uh, um, lid on it. And what I'm doing is instead of putting the acid in a receiving flask like I've always done in the past, I am putting it directly into the storage bottle. I got a couple of adapters that go from, uh, oh, what are the numbers here? 2942 to 2440. So this goes in the bottle and then the uh, the end of the whatever that piece is called, sorry, goes into into there. And oh, we're starting to get some acid coming over. I don't know if it's showing up there. Some drops of acid coming over. Finally, I just started this up. So this is my first run putting the acid directly into the bottle. Um so that's going to save me the trouble of having to deal with pouring the acid into the bottle, which is sometimes makes a mess. Yeah, there's going to be quite a bit of flow going right now. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. So I'll probably turn down the heat because we'll probably foam up otherwise. Or turn the heat down a little bit. Just so we don't get foam over. So going straight into the um, storage bottle and another thing I've started doing is I'm not using I'm not diluting the acid anymore I'm just using it straight for in my gold refining and you know the only difference between using the straight acid and the dilute acid is you know I used to use less of the acid because it's really potent and it's it's not hard to use too much when you're using the straight acid you know, if you're used to, you know, putting in a couple milliliters of the dilute stuff, you need to use, you know, maybe a milliliter and a half or one milliliter of this stuff because it's really potent. And I have to remember to wear the uh, the vinyl gloves when I'm handling this acid so that uh, you know, if I ever splash any on the gloves, they don't uh, burst into flames, whereas I could get away with wearing nitrile gloves with the uh, dilute acid. But uh, with this stuff, got to wear vinyl. Otherwise, you can become a human torch if you're not careful. So, let me see here, we can see, get some of the outside condensation off. You can see that the, the acid's condensing in like the first inch, inch and a half of the condenser up there. You know, if I was using tap water, especially in the summertime when the tap water's not particularly cold, you know, it, it would be condensing all the way down in here. So, this is, this is looking good. I'm not seeing... Yeah, the orange, the orange fumes have only just made it down here, so this is pretty good. Also, one other thing, I have found what I was doing in the past. Let me get the get the light right here. What I was doing in the past was I was uh, once this flask of reactants is done, I would swap it out with my other boiling flask full of fresh reactants and uh, keep going. What I have found is I can put up to about three um, batches of reactants into this flask, one after another, and just keep running it, and then only have one flask to clean up at the end. I wouldn't go more than about three because the flask starts getting full, and foam over into the condenser becomes more likely if you're not really careful about the uh, watching the temperature. So... Nitric acid production is getting easier and easier 
and I'm getting more and more of it with each run. So I'm really, really happy with this setup. And like I said, I did this last time and I didn't film it. I just wanted to make sure everything was working. All the ice water was working. The multiple batches of reactants was working. The, the going into the uh, um, storage bottle instead of the receiving flask. Everything was working just fine. And I said, well, let me next time I make nitric acid, let me just film it and uh, show everybody how easy it can be. Okay, on to the second batch of reactants and it's heating up again. I let it cool down enough that it wasn't fuming too badly so that I didn't hit with a big cloud of gas when I when I opened up the uh, the, the ground glass joints to pour more uh, sodium nitrate and uh, sulfuric acid into the uh, boiling flask over here. So just let it cool down enough to do that, then put it back on the heat, and uh, we're back up and running really quickly again. Temperature not quite up at the boiling point of uh, pure nitric acid yet, but we're getting a lot coming over. It's really, really condensing in the condenser there and coming down into the jar, so that's good. Still warming up with a second batch of reactants, and I'll do at least one more batch after this. I think I'll stop after three, because the uh, the boiling flask starts getting full of uh, full of stuff, and I'm a little worried boil over could happen. But still, three batches is going to give me a lot of nitric acid. Cheaper than I can buy it. Okay, I got the third and final batch of reactants in there. Um, when I take this uh, take this setup apart to add more reactants to it, I wear vinyl gloves underneath leather gloves. The leather gloves because it's hot. The glassware is hot. The oil's hot. Everything's hot. And then the vinyl gloves just to stop the acid if anything gets on the gloves and, and the, the leather gloves and soaks through. I found that to be a good working combination. So this is going to be the third and final batch of reactants. My uh, acid bottle, I don't know if that's showing up. It's about almost half full. So I'm expecting with this third batch to bring it almost full because I'm going to run this until I'm getting nothing else. I've stopped it each time while there was still a little bit coming through so I could add more reactants to it. So I'm going to run this until it uh, comes to completion. So I'm expecting to get a fair amount of acid here. This bottle will probably be close to full. So I'll probably have about a half a liter of nearly 100% nitric acid here. Oh yeah, coming across fast now. It'll come across even faster once it gets done heating up because I've just, just, just now turned the heat back on it after putting the new batch of reactants in. So I'll show you what the bottle looks like once I'm done, but it's probably going to be pretty close to full. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, the amount of reactants I'm using each time, um, it's 184 grams of sodium nitrate prills. Let's see if I can get a look at what's going on inside here. It's just starting to bubble away good on the third batch. So 184 grams of sodium nitrate prills and 100 milliliters of nitric acid. So that's what I've put in each batch because I know somebody's going to ask so I might as well get it into the video dripping away it's hard to see through the amber glass but uh, it's dripping away at a good rate bottles filling up Alright, uh, 
third uh, batch of reactants has gone through. I uh, I cooked it until I wasn't really getting much more through the condenser. Pretty good yield. Boy, well, it's hard to see in that that amber glass, but it is about three quarters full. So I would say I've probably got somewhere between 400 and 500 milliliters of nearly 100% nitric acid. It's probably 98, maybe 97. You know, the reactants aren't perfectly dry, so I'm sure there's a little water in there, but it's still super concentrated acid. And I don't have to do anything else to it. I just got to take the apparatus apart and put the cap on the bottle, and I'm done. Um, I got a tub of water here. I'm going to put some uh, baking soda in the water, and I'm going to slowly disassemble, and carefully, slowly and carefully, with all my protective equipment on, disassemble the apparatus and put the pieces in the water. So all of the distillation components and then once this um, beaker this boiling flask over here not beaker this boiling flask over here cools down I will put water with baking soda in it neutralize the contents and uh, dissolve out the big slug of uh, sodium bisulfate down there in the bottom of the flask yeah it's got to cool down some though it's still pretty hot I don't want to have a steam explosion so I got to get my equipment on and uh, my safety equipment on and start disassembling this and uh, put it all away. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, keep it safe out there. Bye.